Hi there folks. A bit of an experiment today with some salvage reloading components. So as of the time of recording of this video, early July 2022, the prices of reloading components are very high uh, and hard to source in a lot of cases. So with that in mind, I thought uh, why not see if I could salvage some primers from some pretty nasty ammunition that I was pulling apart. So a few months ago, I purchased a bag of this horribly corroded 270 Winchester ammo. And you can see why it was marked as being for salvage only, because it looks like it was under water or something. So I purchased this cheaply, basically just for the bullets that were in it. Uh, the bullets, I pulled them out, ran them through my rotary tumbler with stainless steel pins, and they came out looking just fine. The brass, of course, is a write-off that's just going to go into scrap. The powder is unknown because these were reloads, so that's going to be disposed of as well. I was left with the primers, so of course, if you're going to dispose of brass, you can't really leave live primers in it, so I very carefully decapped the, uh, the brass, and that left me with a total of 57 primers, and they don't look very good. They look uh, between poor condition and these ones looked just awful. So I've already reloaded 20 of these and the experiment will be to see if these will go off at all. I have uh, I give them about a 50 percent chance of going off because they look like they've been wet at some point in time or another. After these were decapped they were set in a warm dry place for, well, a month and a half or more uh, to help them dry out as best as possible. And then I got to thinking, what cartridge could I use to test these? I wanted something that didn't have uh, a lot of powder capacity, and I wanted something that I could pull apart easily and I didn't have to worry about damaging the bullets when they were being pulled out. So I came to the conclusion that 762 by 39 would be a good candidate and I have a bunch of 762x39 uh, M43 projectiles. They're not the most accurate thing around to start with, so if I load them and have to pull them apart, it's no big deal. So I've, uh, I've got 20 of these primers used up, as you can see here. They've been loaded into uh, some older Winchester brand cases, and I'm going to take them out to the range, and we're going to see if these primers are any good or not, whether they work, and uh, anyway. Let's uh, cut over to some range footage and uh, we'll see how these things do.
Well, we are back home from the range, and if you took the time to watch the shooting footage, you'll know that some of these went off, and some of them did not go off. So, we have six rounds that refused to fire, and we have 14 which went off without a problem. And I'll note that the ones that did fire, fired without any hang fire. So, that was a bit of a surprise, but anyway, the ones that went off, no issues. The ones that didn't go off, refused even a couple of strikes on them. So, the uh, as you can see, the primers are pretty well struck. So I don't think that's the issue at all. That rifle has proved to be reliable at any rate. So anyway, so there's the outcome. So we have uh, a failure rate of six rounds out of 20 on those. So I'm, uh, I'm left with another bunch of these crappy primers. And I'm actually, I think I'm actually gonna load these 20 up and try them. I'll probably get the same result. I'll probably get something similar to that. These other ones here, which look really awful, I don't think I'm going to even bother with those. I don't think they're worth the time. Obviously, this is not the kind of thing you're going to do with ammunition that you're going to take for any kind of a serious purpose. You're not going to take this, you know, this kind of stuff for any hunting or formal target shooting. This was just stuff to take along at the range, kind of informal plinking, just a bit of trigger time. And I'll tell you, it's a great way to... Uh, to learn how to follow through and not flinch. If you go back and watch the footage, the very first uh, one that didn't go off, you can see me do a, a little mild flinch there. And uh, I got better at that as they, as I went, went along and, uh, and a couple more that didn't go off, I managed to overcome that. So sort of useful for that uh, sort of a training purpose. But I'll reiterate as to the hazards to this. I don't think the loaded ammo is of, was of any hazard as long as uh, you kind of obey the rule of not opening the bolt right away. Once again, I edited the footage to get rid of the delay that I built in after the rounds did not go off. I waited, but nobody wants to watch that. So that is, is uh, something you should uh, pay attention to when rounds don't go off. Don't immediately open the bolt up. As for decapping live primers, uh, no reloading manual out there will tell you that it is a safe practice. And if you do so, it is at your own risk. I will tell you that I have decapped thousands of primers and I have not had one go off yet, but it could happen. So be sure to wear your safety glasses and be cognizant of the design of your reloading press. Certain types of reloading press are more dangerous than others if you use them for decapping. I'm using a Lee uh, Classic Cast Turret Press. And the, the aperture or hole for the, the primer to come out of goes straight down towards the floor. So if a primer did discharge while you were decapping it, it would go straight down. I have another reloading press which I would not use for that purpose. It is a, an RCBS rock chucker and it has a trough down the side of the, the ram. And if a primer went off, the primer can be propelled down the ram off that little ramp and it can hit you. And apparently this has happened to people in the past and they have been injured uh, getting hit with the primer coming out at high velocity. So it is a dangerous thing to do and I don't recommend that anybody do it. Um, one thing that I do is I very gently press the primers out. I do not hammer on them. Hammer uh, Primers are designed to be fired by uh, impact on a pin and basically you're pushing them out with a pin if you're de decapping live primers. So the idea that I use is to approach this to very gently touch the primer and then apply continually gradual force to pop the primer out. And I haven't had any problems yet, like I said, but it's not something that I would recommend that anybody else do. So just want to get those uh, caveats uh, out there. Anyway, hopefully you guys found this to be uh, somewhat interesting. Um, I am not reduced to the point where I need to shoot these kind of primers. I have other primers. This is more of a, an example of something that I thought would be interesting to do, kind of like trying to find out if a round that's been buried in the dirt for two or three years will fire. So I guess you can look at it as uh, <laughs> what would happen in a worst case scenario. So anyway, as usual, your uh, comments and ratings are appreciated. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you in the next one.